Hey, it's Bill Tenney Britton with the Affected Church Group. Thanks for joining me. This session is on the basics of setting up your home studio. Uh, for some of you watching this, this is going to be really basic. That's the key word there in you know, the basics. So if you're advanced, you may want to go out and have a cup of coffee and come back in about 20 minutes. But these are things that I wish I'd heard when I first got started out, when I first got moving into video production in my home and in my church, I wished I'd known some of these things, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. Let me introduce myself to begin with. I'm Bill Tenney Britton, like I said, and I am not a tech guy. I've been a pastor for over 35 years, and for the past almost 20 years, I've worked with pastors and churches and church leaders, helping them to grow themselves and their churches to the next level. I managed to write a bunch of books and write a bunch of articles. And I published Net Results Magazine, been around since 1980. But I broke into video production in 2008 when my wife and I began making training videos for churches. So fast forward to 2020. I was the lead pastor of a church when COVID broke out in March. And like most churches, we immediately went to online services. I wanted to take my video production or our worship services to the next level because just straight streaming just didn't seem to be working very well. And I wanted something interactive. We wanted to do Zoom, but we wanted to do a really high-end worship service that was designed for the online audience. And so I turned to PTZ Optics at the Worship Summit Live, the, the first one that wasn't well, the first one, the first one I attended, and began learning how to put that together. And I learned a lot since then. So because I was home for all this, I built out my first real home studio in my basement. It was really cozy, as you can see. It was not quite even eight foot across. It was almost a closet. That studio worked okay for us until late 2021 when disaster struck in my own house. Our sewer flooded the basement and it flooded into my office, into my library, into my den, and into the studio. $45,000 of insurance money, money later, our lives began getting back to normal. But that included an opportunity for us to build out a new studio with a little more room. So I had, was asked by PTZ Optics uh, for several years to be a presenter. And this year when Paul reached out, I suggested I talk about how to set up your own home studio. Now, a couple of caveats to that. First, my studio is not a professional level studio. It's in my basement. It's actually in my office and I'm a pastor, and money's not all that plentiful. On the other hand, I've been making videos for a long time now, and over those years, I've collected equipment a little bit at a time. So if you were starting off from the beginning and you wanted to try and duplicate my studio, it could be kind of pricey, but you don't have to start there. Start small in your home studio. You can shoot really excellent quality, and I'm going to talk about this, with a cell phone or a couple of cell phones. And you can do the, the different perspectives with your cameras and all the rest and work your way from there. A couple of tripods, a couple of lights, uh, and a couple of phones. And you have a couple of phones, you know, unless you're one of those, you know, you traded it in, you probably have an extra one somewhere and you can go back and forth. So you can right off the bat, have a real studio using cell phones. We'll talk about audio and cell phones, though, in a little bit. But I want to start off with the first things first. Audio and video quality, they go hand in hand, but they also goes in that order. Bad video will ruin a great experience. But bad audio mean that, means that no one's going to experience what you're presenting anyway. I was listening to an audio book just the other day, and the, re the reading audio quality was horrible. I listened to about 20 seconds and said, yeah, that's enough of that. My house was built in the 1940s, and the electrics in this house, the circuits are old, and there's some lousy RF, some radio frequency, that bu buzzing sound, and that crept into our audio something horrible. And you know, 
that buzzing can drive you up a wall. And I know that there's probably ways of scrubbing that on the uh, on post-production. Of course, there's no scrubbing it if you're doing live, if you're streaming. So I decided that the best way to take care of it was to get a really decent mixer. So I got an Alesis USB mixer, and that solved my issue. Now, to be honest, I'd used another major brand of mixers before, and the, the RF sound went right through it. And like I said, you can take care of it in post-production to a certain extent, but not completely. And so when I switched to the Alesis, it took care of the buzzing completely, and I have really decent sound quality. Now, that said, a good microphone is priceless. And by that, I mean really expensive. And so that's why I use a okay microphone rather than a priceless, really good microphone. When we started this, we used a Radio Shack lapel mic. Those of you who are old enough, you remember Radio Shacks. Well, now Amazon.com has pretty much everything, and you can get an inexpensive mic that will do just fine. However, over the years, we've graduated to a sure lapel mic. So a decent mic is, is a good way to go. Now, when it comes to cameras, I use two PTZ Optics NDI cameras. I have a 12X and a 20X. Now, the 20X is probably overkill in this little tiny studio, but someday I'm hoping I'll graduate to a larger studio, and then the 20X uh, uh, camera is going to be incredible. I'll be ecstatic. Now, I went with NDI because I've been around the block and I know what the price of cabling is. HDMI cabling is expensive. And if you go over, I don't remember how many feet it is because I don't use it anymore, um, but you have to have a booster and all the rest. And what I loved about the NDI cabling is it uses a Cat 5, Cat 6 cable and, you know, network cable, regular network cabling. And the really nice thing about it well, there's two nice things about the network cabling. Number one is it doesn't make any difference if it's a 12-foot cable or a 100-foot cable. The quality is identical. The second thing I like is my cameras don't need a secondary power supply. The, I use power over internet from my switch. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the CAT cable carries the power. Now, when I got started, I leaned on Paul and Tessa's YouTube training videos to get it all up and running, which is how I learned about NDI. I didn't even know how to spell NDI when I started this thing. And I learned through them and what they thought. In fact, I bought the exact products they recommended right down to the TP-Link NDI switch, the Archer wireless router, and I completely drank the Kool-Aid and jumped into OBS and NDI.TV tools. I mean, I went all the way because I didn't know what I was doing and they did and they're extensive library of training videos on YouTube is incredible. I love PTZ Optics cameras and their joystick and all the training that I've got from them, but that is not how I started out back in 2008. I learned over the years how to set up this own studio and the principles are the same, whether you're streaming or recording. I like recording because I really like the ability to edit myself because I need the editing most of the time. But um, I want to share now, switch into general practices for your studio, whether you're using a cell phone or whether you're using SD cameras or uh, NDI cameras or, I don't know, higher end, in which case I don't know why you're watching me because you know more about it than I do. So here we are. Again, to start off with, you need decent audio. And if you're using a cell phone, that audio is going to be Okay, you, you can, it has enough oomph to shoot excellent video, but the microphones just don't do good. And if you're shooting in a home studio similar to mine and you use the built-in microphone, it's going to sound like this. Bouncy, flouncy, bouncy, flouncy, fun, 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 which, of course, this isn't fun, 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 fun. This is really kind of bouncy. So the first trick is if you have a studio like mine that might be a little bouncy, if you're using a a cell phone or using any you know camera for that matter that is recording from the camera, grab an inexpensive lapel mic and get yourself a digital recorder. You know, one of those little, they're like 30 bucks, little digital recorder. 
And then when you do, you know, when, and shoot, record yourself on your mic and on the recorder, shoot the video, and of course it's gonna shoot the audio too, on your uh, cell phones. And then in post-production, you can mix them. You can delete out, if you will, the cell phone talk, and you can have the micro digital recorder audio, which would be really high-end quality. I have a hint for you though. Before you delete your cell phone footage and the audio, or cell phone audio, when you start your video, clap. I know that was really loud, sorry. But that clap spikes in both the uh, micro recorder as well as on the recording in your digital cell phone. And when you do post-production, you just find that spike, you line them up, and then you don't have the problem with your mouth going and the sound going la 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 la. So just a hint that I've learned over the years, it worked out really well. Now, if you're streaming, it's probably worth investing in a wireless microphone because you don't get the post-production ability to you know, line it all up. It's gotta be right from the very beginning. And the audio, again, is so important. You want good audio. So everyone I know who does streaming video on a cell phone on a regular basis, especially if they're gonna be outside or moving around, they swear by the um, wireless mics made by Rode. And I, I can't give you a recommendation because I don't use them. I only do home studio stuff, but that's what everyone tells me. Get a Rode wireless microphone, it hooks up to your cell phone and away you go. Now, I've used the Apple EarPods and they work okay but they're kind of bouncy and the audio quality is not nearly as good. So if you don't have good acoustics, again, I really recommend getting the lapel mic um, and going from there. Personally, I like using a microphone that I can run through a mixer and that allows me to have extra control over the quality of sound, the gain, the reverb. And I think I paid less than $200 for the mixer way back when. Um, I did check the price and they're still under $200. So yeah, it's an investment, but it's a good investment for really good quality. All right, so let's talk about video. First thing, if you're using a cell phone to shoot video, unless you're shooting for Instagram or TikTok or an online service like that, the camera goes horizontally, not vertically, horizontally. And it's like, I shouldn't have to say this, but every screen you look at, outside of Instagram and TikTok, they're always, you know, they're landscape, not portrait. They're sideways. So hold your camera sideways, your cell phone sideways to shoot video. Again, unless you're shooting for TikTok or Instagram and there are people who do that, great, God bless you. But for the rest of us, watching a vertical portrait kind of video on your computer screen, your television, or your tablet, it's just like, what? What are we doing here? So turn it sideways. Second, when you shoot video, hold the camera up above you slightly. It should be above your face slightly because if it's not above your face, the angle is not at your best side because people are looking up your nose while you're talking and that's just eh, not okay. So camera up just a smidge. And, you know, you, you don't want to take up, way up high where you're getting the bald spot. Not talking about that. Um, the bald spot, but you want it up enough so that you have a really good perspective on your face. Third, the backdrop. No trees, no ships growing out of your head. So pay attention to your backdrop. So if you don't have a decent backdrop, this is really truly my mantle and really truly a painting that, that I have. Um, if, if you don't have that, then for less than $30, you can get a photo quality backdrop. It's like a sheet and it's, it's, got a, it's printed with a photograph of pretty much whatever you want. You can duct tape it to a sturdy PVC pipe and suspend it from your ceiling or, or stick two thumbtacks up on the ceiling and put it, you know, pin it to your wall, whatever it is, that's a real backdrop and it looks good. Lighting is equally important. You want to look three-dimensional. You don't want to look like Bart Simpson or, or you know, sitting on a screen flat. 
So you want to use lights that move you, you know, move you out from two-dimensional. Now, with the advent of tunable or colored, if you will, LED lights, it's made lighting so much easier. Right now, I'm shooting with an overhead light. They're at 50% because when it's bright, I kind of shine. Um, I have a daylight fill from years ago. I'd bought a diffused light kit. Yeah, really nice. I love it, but I had it, so I use it. But it, on this side over here, I've just got an LED light in a gooseneck uh, stand, and I'm using that, again, 50%, just to fill it in. So really today, it's really inexpensive to run your lights because you can. Just get the ones that you can adjust the colors and adjust the, uh, the, the intensity. Now, I use a ring light. I use a ring light as a backlight. Let's see if you can see that here. Let's see. There you are. See, I got a, this lovely ring light back there. Now, I got to tell you, I didn't buy that ring light because uh, I wanted it as a backlight. You, have to, you ought to have a backlight because it separates you from the backdrop. But that's the only thing that ring light's good for me because I wear glasses. And when you have a ring light and you wear glasses, you have big white circles in your glasses. And the only way of getting rid of those circles is to move the angle of that light so that it's out of the reflection and the recording side. And the problem with the ring light is now I've got a side light, not a front light. So if you have glasses, oh, by the way, the same problem is when you're doing Zoom or you're recording on your computer screen and you have glasses because your monitor reflects in your glasses and you, you, know, you disappear. It's just, again, not as professional as it could be. The way to deal with it is to play the angles. Get your lights in different, uh, at very obtuse angles, and then your reflections go away. So next, plan what you're gonna say. It's great if you can shoot off the top of your head, but if you need to have a script, you're gonna use note cards or whatever, then don't sound like you're reading. Personally, I use a teleprompter. When I do shoot video for my iPhone, I use Teleprompter for Video, that's the app. Uh, it was inexpensive, it's easy to use, and I love it because it's, it, uh, the Teleprompter streams its, the words on the left side of the screen, which is where the camera is, and it looks like I'm looking in the camera the whole time, even though I'm reading. When I set up my home studio, I graduated to Caddy Buddy, uh, a Caddy Buddy teleprompter. That's you know the mirror kind of teleprompter. And I use it with my iPad. My iPad's uh, right up there and it tells me what to say. To be fair, I've tried a number of teleprompter programs. You know, there's two different ones. There's or two different kinds. There's the ones that scroll at the same steady rate all the time and you would better do your talking word for word because if you don't, if you go off script, it keeps moving and you're trying to catch up. Um, and I'm a pastor and I don't do scripts. I go off script on a lot of my stuff. I've gone off script so often here, it's unreal. So if I wanna change my rate of delivery or my, you know, the, the, that app just didn't work for me. So I got the one, I tried the one where it scrolls and based on what it hears you saying. And it worked okay. The problem is I sometimes had to stop and repeat myself to get it to catch up. Sometimes I had to stop and repeat myself to get it to catch up. Sometimes I, yeah, just like that, before it would say, oh, 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 that's what you said, and it moves up. So I just work off of PowerPoint. But to make that happen, I had to use the Flipper program, a Flipper macro for PowerPoint from Craig Engstrom, and I put the link down below. Um, and that flips the side so that it works well with the mirror, um, another free program. So let me wind all this up to talk about the software. Because we talked about cameras, we talked about audio, we talked about backdrops, we talked about scripts. Now let's talk about the software. Like I said, I use you know, a couple bits of software for my presentations. I use PowerPoint and I use Flipper, um, and that allows me to stay on track, if you will. Um, I use OBS. You can use OBS, which is, again, free. That's why I like OBS, uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm not a cheapskate, but um, why spend money when you don't have to? And OBS works great for recording. This is recording, and I'm, I will edit it. And, uh, and it's, it works great for streaming, if you're going to stream. And I use NDI. 
um, NDI.TV tools, and those are the tools that use for my NDI cameras. It, it turns in, uses the NDI switcher and allows OBS to talk to my cameras, and it's really easy. And again, it's free. I like free. Again, like I said, I said earlier, is I like to record my video. And that means I have to do post-production. I use Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro. Rather pricey. I like Premiere Pro. If I was starting all over again, I would use DaVinci Resolve. Free program, and I've talked to people and seen the, the videos that people are producing with it, and it's high-end. I'm not sure it's equal to, or perhaps even better in some ways, than um, Adobe Premiere Pro. If I was starting over, free. I'd go with that. Finally, build it as you go. You don't have to start top-notch to begin with. In fact, you can start with just your cell phone and create great videos that can train people and help them to, you know, whatever it is you're trying to help them to do. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. You can reach me at EffectiveChurch.com if you have questions. Um, I'll be at the Zoom uh, meeting following this later on this afternoon to have conversations if you have questions. Uh, otherwise, hey, I'll see you again soon.